Are you ready? Hello, this is Hello. Um, a new podcast with Daisy and me, um, Margie, and it's called This Is Not Legal Advice. And we want to welcome you. Daisy's going to tell you our vision. Yeah, so our vision is to appeal. No conviction, no penalty, and a thank you from the magistrate is what we want. That's what we're going for. So we're going to do a series of these um, uh, these videos on different elements of self-repping and the legal um, process. But in each case, what we're going for is no conviction, no penalty. And, and a thank you. And um, so we think that that's where we're heading. That's that's going to be, um, you know, an important part of the revolution uh, as we move through this next period of time. And anything less than that is not good enough. So today um, our topic is appealing. Um, and you can, of course, self-rep an appeal. Um, that means you, you don't need to get a lawyer, but you could. Some of this stuff applies both ways. But we want you, we want to demystify it. And of course, this show is called this is not legal advice and we are not giving you legal advice. But we're just reminding you, you can self-rep and um, these are some of the things that you might think about as you're self-repping. And we're going to start with Daisy's case study because she has appealed. Um, and go for it, Daisy. Yes. Um, what happened? So what happened was uh, I appealed against a CCO that I got. Yeah, what's um, a CCO? Uh, so a CCO is a community corrections order. Mm. So basically uh, what used to be called a good behaviour bond. And that was for two years with some conditions of non-association with some of my very close friends. And um, also I had to report, I think, for a bit. Mm. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. So basically I thought that it was too harsh because I would have to be of good behaviour for two years, which meant not getting arrested, not being on the front line, not doing the work that I am, um, you know, wanting to do, that we need to do to, um, you know, in this movement to achieve uh, justice for the climate and, you know, all the things. And so one of, one of the things in there is that um, just to, just to, clarify people might have heard about not associating with people but often we get those as bail conditions but in this case daisy got those um non-associations as we call it you're not allowed to talk to friends as part of a sentence and so this is the appealing is all about the court case and the sentence and in this case were you appealing the whole outcome or just the sentence um i was appealing uh, the sentence yes Okay. Because I felt that was the bit of my life that it most affected. And also I didn't want it to be a precedent for people, you know, to get these conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's always, like I say, always worth appealing. And not legal advice is always always, uh, always appeal. We're going Unless to, you get no you. conviction, no penalty. No penalty and, thank, and you. thank you. So you yeah. could always, always appeal. Even if you've got no conviction, no penalty, you should appeal and go after the thank you. Yeah. Um. That's not legal advice. No. Um, and But all right, so in this case, you did it yourself. So what did you do? So I um, went in to the court the day of the sentence. Mm, straight away? And, yeah, uh, I think I was, I believe I was in Newtown. So it was just upstairs from uh, where I was in court. And yeah, I was, I, I'd been advised by not legal advisor friends. Uh, to put it in pretty much straight away, but you do have a bit of time uh, yeah. to put it in. Is that about, is it about like 28 days, Maggie? Is that right? Yeah, I think 28 days is correct. Yeah. Um, and I'll just show you what that looks like seeing we've got oh, the yeah. moment. I've got it here, right here, share screen. Um, This is what it looks like, believe it or not. There, can you see that? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. I recognise that. Remember that? You remember remember that form? So yes. it's a notice of appeal to the district court. Yeah. And you got you just got to put your. It's quite simple to to fill out. Always got to yeah. got a friend there to help you. But you you know you put your name and your address. Now in this case, yeah. my lawyer's done it for me, and they've put a completely wrong DOB. They completely made up my DOB, made up my address. So obviously, you don't have yeah. to worry about those things either. And then you've got to write what the offence was that you've just been yeah. through. And it's slightly different in um, in uh, New South Wales, but pretty similar. This is New South Wales. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, it looked a bit different the one I had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, this is New South Wales. And it says, look, it's quite similar. It's I am appealing on the following grounds. Because. I'm appealing to the above since because I'm not guilty and the penalty is too severe. Yeah, exactly. I love it. It's very simple, isn't it? I'm not guilty. Yeah. So in, in Daisy's case, she just wrote, um, because the penalty is too severe. severe because I'd already pleaded guilty. So yeah. because that was another uh, oh, yeah. uh, strategy we were using at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or in this case, I'd pled not guilty and yeah. was appealing on that grounds. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so that's getting rid of that. Very simple. And you can use that as a, you can copy that if you come back to this video, you can. Just and there is a small it. fee for that, but you know, I've always got a. Yeah, a it's 130 bucks actually. Yeah, with a, with a cash card around. Yeah. That's right. And a not legal friend. Can just but you do get, you do get a free um transcript with that, right? And Ooh, otherwise yeah. the transcripts can cost like 500 or $800 for a longer trial. And so you do get for your 130 bucks, you get a tree, free transcript. Which is good because we can use that to learn from and yeah, see what you know how the how the um, how the um, yeah the rhetoric goes with with you in the court. Mm, mm, totally. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you went in, you did that form, and did the then... form, and I got a date straight away. They gave me a date to appear to appeal. Yep. And because I was travelling around at the time, I happened to not be able to be in Sydney. And also, I think it was still like the back end of COVID times. So I actually appeared for that, uh, for an for an appeal on an AVL, which is an audio visual link with the mm. courts, usually mm. through like WebEx or something. Mm. And uh, yeah, and then that got adjourned. Uh, just for whatever reason, I um, can't remember. But I think it was just because, oh, they wanted a sentencing assessment report. Oh yeah, that so was can, that was an interesting fact. So before that, they yeah. set the date, they said you went and did a mention, and yeah. a mention is just another word for sort of arranging the real day. So you're getting things in place for the real day. Yeah, it's also almost like the magistrate or judge is trying to just like organise their diary and liaise with the prosecutors, the mm. uh, self defence or the lawyers, yeah, to get everybody, you know. The so right they don't turn up. To crime. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't turn up and they go, well, where's the sentencing report? And you go, oh, was I mm. supposed to have a sentencing report? You know, like, yeah. So they're trying yeah. to organize. So you have a mention. And in this case, they included this what was the sentencing report thing? It was a sentencing assessment report. So basically, I had to speak to a someone who works for the parole office, who's a community corrections officer based in Lismore. And he interviewed me over the phone um, because I think I couldn't go in because of the floods. And he, yeah, he just basically wanted to get to know who I am and, and talk to me about if I had any remorse or insight into what I've done, if I had some family support and if mm. they understood what I was, what, what and why I was doing. And he actually said, oh, you know, I know, you know, you're so passionate and that and that you will do this again. But I also think that, um, yeah, you know, you're not a threat to society sort of thing, you know. <laughs> Dang yeah. Out. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, the sentencing report worked in my favour, I feel. Mm. Um, it gives the court a little bit more information about you, a bit more story. Mm. And the final appeal decision went my way. And it was reduced from, mm -hmm. I think it was reduced from two years to uh, a year. But because it had been six months in the process, you know, I'd already had six months of that. Mm. So, um, basically, it turned out to be 18 months because... Uh, the decision of that day meant the CCO started again on that day for a year. Oh, so you, oh, so you still had the CCO, but they dropped certain things? Yeah, they dropped the amount of time it was for and they yeah. dropped the non-association orders. I mean, th th they didn't officially say that, but they just didn't mention them again, so neither did yeah. I. So that's always yeah. useful to remember. Yeah. They don't always know everything. Things get lost. Police prosecutors lose things. So, yeah, yeah sometimes it's best to just you know, go with the flow. And uh, the not legal advice, you know, from me would be that. Yeah. So, yeah, I was really Did pleased. Did you make some outcome. submissions? Pardon? Did you make some submissions? I did. I wrote, a, I was advised uh, by my non-legal friends to write a letter to the court um, expressing um, some remorse for um, any inconvenience I might have caused to members of the public uh but uh, you know and, and i'm thanking the court for their time and you know being a little bit 
you know, Probably. playing that game. And also I, I wrote my, I wrote um, like a summary of, of myself and I called it um, Speaking from the Heart. So, you know, please take into account on this appeal. And I read that out in my court appearance, um, you know, and also what helped was having some references, some friends that were in sort of, you know, deemed sort of professional or um, academic type roles to, you know, to give me a yeah good character reference. Right. Yeah, that yeah. helps. So, so just so just remembering there. So, you need some references. You need some sort of submission. Submission is where you make a bit of an argument. And in this case, the argument was, "I'm just a terrific person doing the right thing." It didn't have to be complicated, um, and it wasn't a legal argument. It was just like this was too strong because I'm a good person doing the right thing, mm -hmm. and um, and then you had some letters, a bunch of letters from people saying you were a terrific person doing the right thing. Yeah, um, you were a little bit crawly in that in that you sort of set your yeah. tone inside what the um court seems to appreciate. Um, yeah. and um anything else? And then you had this sentencing report from this again oh, yeah. an interview with a guy where you told him I'm a terrific person and yeah. doing, I was doing the right thing. And I suppose it's something they called. Oh, also, they asked for a parity report, which is sort of something along the same lines, you know, um because. Yeah, like we are testing the courts with what we are actually doing. You know, they are, they had in the past been struggling to what to give the appropriate sentence, if any, to people like ourselves that are standing up for climate or social justice. So that's when you probably didn't use EH versus QPS at that time, but now I was, not, yeah, I was not aware of it, but something along those lines would be really good. Yeah, do you want to talk a bit about that? case Margie. well yes yeah, so so it seems to me that people don't like putting cases towards the magistrate because the magistrates use different frameworks for when they're um and they seem to be on our behalf quite random frameworks but at the district court level uh what we discovered in um violet's appeal was that her lawyer michael healy somebody can't remember his name yeah. that he um he used this case called EH versus QPS, which itself references some other cases, and it really indicates that, you know, there should be no jail time for activists, that, um, you know, it's quite a low starting point for activists where there's no harm, it's low end offending, you know, there's they go through a number of points. So another day we might do a, um, a little podcast on how you can use EH, QP, EH versus QPS um, I would love that, yeah. Um, and we can talk right. about, about how, the, you know, how that, that case is structured and how you can use that as part of your sentencing. And this, yeah. of course, would not be legal advice because this show is, this is not legal advice. This is not legal advice. Yeah, so I think, like, you know, something to remember is the appeal is, in the court's eyes, you know, something that may be showing new evidence as well as a bit more, I think, of your backstory, you know. Uh, so... And stuff that you didn't get in in the first in the first go. Did did you try to show that the magistrate was a bit biased or anything like that? Um, I I think I talked about it being very hard, um, and I also talked about um, like you know um, if if because it was a, it was well, oh, that's right. There was a clause in it about community service hours. Mm. I had 180 community service hours with this CCO, which was super harsh. So mm. I explained that those hours would be taking me away from my community, where I volunteer at the time I was volunteering at Trees Not Bombs, so serving mm. people meal free meals who were flood affected, who had nowhere to cook or nowhere to live, and it was kind of became a bit of a social hub and a you know counselling centre really. And also I was really um, and you know doing shifts at the hospital where they were desperate for the nurses and. So, you know, my community became like more, it was obviously more important than doing these hours. So that, that he took all that into account as well. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm just going to go through a few points that we wanted to raise. So yes. about why it's good. Like one of the reasons I think, I'm not sure if we mentioned this already, because we had a bit of a chat before, but mm -hmm. um, your sentence gets put off. As soon as you put oh. the appeal in, your sentence, all the conditions for your sentence oh. gone until the appeal. So it's like you didn't really have the first sentence and you're out on a sort of a 
permanent bail sort of situation. Yeah. Um, so when I actually did get arrested again, I think between the um, the hearings, and it didn't affect me because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a different state, which I think helped. But, you know, yeah, so basically it gave, me a bit, yeah, gave me a bit more freedom. Uh, yeah. So be, while you've got an appeal on, you're not, you're not under the same conditions that they may have put you on, like good behaviour sort of conditions or non-associations. All of those are gone. Yeah, um, or it could be something like you're not allowed in a certain state or in a certain area, but obviously then you are while the appeal is in the court system. And, and like mine took a while because, like I say, I got adjourned and then – so it took about maybe six months, so it gave me a bit yeah. of extra time, yeah. Don't have to pay. Yeah. So, um, and there's a good success rate because – one of the things I, one of the reasons I'd like to say this is mine and mine, but there's other reasons. But one, we think there might be a good success rate is that district court judges think they're better than magistrates, so they want to tell magistrates they're not really, you know, operating within the law, and they they like to be more legally, legal, legally. And so, if yeah. you can put some legal arguments, we we wouldn't give any advice about that here. But if you do do that, um, the district court seems to be they've got they've got a good outcome. So they seem not everybody gets good outcome, but they do seem to flatten that case. Any other reasons they might do that? I feel like you know they are probably more experts in their field, and ex yeah, like they've been around for a while, and I feel like they've obviously had a few uh, climate and um, ecological and peace activists through the system now. So uh, it, it, yeah, it's better to go before them because they can actually influence. Um, you know, the magistrate's the, court. Yeah, the, what the magistrates do in the courts. Yeah, yeah, and they they also seem to be a little bit sort of shielded from the sort of um community shock jock, um political dog whistling that's going on. That sometimes the magistrates go, oh, the the we're supposed to be representing the community, and the shock jocks are saying this. So we'll yeah, and and they they're the times that we've received high sentences when there's been this sort of faux outrage from the um from the the shock jocks and the horrible yeah. entertainment media and what do you so, think as well it's a little bit of because by the time you had an appeal it's probably it could be like up to three months you know the courts are always behind and things and um, maybe like if it was a high profile case um then maybe things have died down a bit in that sense and people have read different things or whatever so you know it might that might also be a bonus in your favor yeah, so um, so we had some examples of that as Serge, when he finally had his appeal, went off, for, he went from a year in prison <laughs> to nothing at all. To nothing. Uh, I know. Nothing. nothing. And yeah. then he had done quite a lot of house arrest somehow in the middle of there. Same yeah. with Violet. She went from um, yeah. 15 months in prison yeah. to um, nothing. Or yeah, to nothing. Virtually nothing, right? She'd yeah. also done house arrest. But yeah, um, because yeah, I feel like that's a much you know, they do take all that into account when you've been locked up or had any that time yeah, intimidation. Yeah. Um. So we 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 are seeing yeah. very good good results. So you can one of the things we've heard is that you can do as many submissions as you like. So they can even be sort of almost conflicting. You can say one thing in one submission that is completely undermines something in the other other submission but they actually take the submissions in as sort of separate ideas yeah in an amazing way that the law does it and we are not giving any legal advice but no we're just talking about our experience of dealing experiences with the law. that's right would so that be like a little bit like exhibits then you know when they have like and trials like exhibit a exhibit b so your submissions are like to this thing you know yeah, different yeah. arguments. So we you put different arguments about why it should be low, and you can you can include any minor ones, um, like I don't know that you've got a birthday coming up and you need to be out for the birthday, or I suppose yeah. that was an example of a minor one, or you know, yeah. it's a 50th birthday or something. Or you can have more complex major ones like the EH versus QPS and using those really complex legal arguments. And this is another time as well where you can also bring up a bit about, like you say, any health issues that it's caused or uh yeah obviously ptsd is a big um, part of that yeah um, yeah and i mean you know it could be different media as well like you could have a, a some video a video or something that makes a good point or yeah yeah, yeah or maybe a one of your support letters could be a video yeah exactly yeah um you can take the whole day like uh when you go to the mention you could negotiate say look this is going to take a bit of time because 
you know, I just feel like I'm self-repping and, you know, I'm probably going to be a bit slow making my way through the argument. So can you just make sure you've got a whole day? I'm going to bring in a couple of extra witnesses. I just had an idea, actually. Mm. So just to share with you, I've got a the Picasso case ongoing. I've not actually even been sentenced for that yet. Mm. I've just had like a first mention. But, you know, I was thinking of you know, when it gets to the point of either sentence or appeal, to have a piece of perspex in the courtroom glue my hand to it and then take it off and just you know show that it doesn't leave that much of a mark or stain so it's not worth thousands of dollars to replace which is what they're saying that should be my penance yeah correct very good you better do that in advance just in case there's some outcome that you haven't (laughs) (laughs) oh yes yes (laughs) um here's one i did earlier Um, (laughs) you can bring new witnesses like emma did one recently and she brought matt Matt Perry from Task Strike Force Guard. Yes. So you can you can think about you, you've got a bit of time to think about who would you like to come and who yes. would you like to see in the flesh being pressed by your incisive questioning. Um, yeah. So that's yes. that's something you could do, and if you ask around uh, and get some some good advice from real lawyers as well as not advice from non lawyers, you might have some ideas yeah. about that. And also, yeah, so, yeah that, that reminds me, I actually did have a professional clinic, clinical nurse consultant who was a, also a lifelong friend, who was one of my character references, who appeared in the courtroom with me. He was on by AVL, but he appeared, he spoke to, yeah, the, the, the magistrate, and I feel like that really did stand me, stand me in good stead because of yeah. his... Yeah, because of his uh, forging the way for uh, Daisy's forging the way forward to have support letters in person. You know, like you'd often have a like a psychologist at the murderer's case. Yes, we can have, we so can have the, psychologists as well. With the going back to the Picasso case, the guy, a guy called Professor Carolee, who is quite well known uh, in the uh, Melbourne academic community. Um, I think you know it's quite well well known in like environmental and ecology circles as well, said he would be a expert witness for me in court as needed as well. So things like that happen all the time. We have got a lot of support out there for people that are quite, you know, influential and it's just good to, yeah, put it out there as, in support for your case. Another thing to notice is that um, you in an appeal, you can't, Get a, you can't get a, you can't have a lower, you can't have a worse outcome than you've already got. Yes. Right? It's not, it's not like it goes, it's not, it doesn't go back to nothing. It goes, it, it, it's either what you've already got or something. Yeah. Like They'll either just say, I dismiss this case, it stands, you, you are a dirty rat bag or not. Yeah. That's right. And so you can't get something worse. And yeah. so, so that means there's no, there's no real bad judge and no bad outcome. Um, there's only a, bit, a better outcome. So that's something to keep in mind. It's a little bit of work, but you're likely yeah. to get it. And the, 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 the judge will give you a warning. I was just trying to look in my notes. I did write it down once, but I can't remember exactly where. But they'll say this is a, let's say, a Charlie warning. A Parker warning. Thank you. And um, that means to, to stop what you're saying. Otherwise, you are going to get a worse outcome. Ooh. So like almost like a contempt threat. Yes. It's a Parker warning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, because you might be going to put your foot in it. And if you're saying yeah. it, then, yeah. you're going to get worse. Yeah. You might have just like gone off on a tangent and started chanting or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So if you just a, a note that if you're still in prison um, and you've got your appeal, the you don't get released from prison because you've got an appeal, because you put an appeal in, right? So you've been in there for three weeks and – um everyone's freaking out on the outside and you're on the inside and you or your lawyer puts an appeal in you don't automatically get released at that point right what you get then is that you're eligible at that point to apply for bail so once once the appeal is um has gone through and we say we've got an appeal in then immediately in the next five minutes potentially or the next day you then apply for bail uh, and you have to remember that you're then beholden to that bail until the resolu- resolution of all the appeal proceedings. Because that could be another nine months, six yes. nine months, unfortunately. So just just be remembering that that's an outcome. But choose okay. carefully if you will appeal which appeal type. 
So there's two appeal types. We've been talking about the sentencing appeal here today, but yeah. um, I'm going to be doing an appeal against the whole um, outcome. That's the sort of, um, you know, guilty, not guilty appeal. So I, I pled not guilty and I think they were wrong uh, that I was found guilty. So we're going to appeal the outcome as well as the sentence. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so you've got to think carefully what type of appeal and what the strength of your bail bail application is going to be and we'll talk yeah. about bail on a different day but yeah um, that, i think it's important to say as well that once we have when we have had people jailed and they have gone through this process um they have always been granted bail they have yeah but they they may not um just putting this out that this is not legal advice because this show no. is, this is not legal advice but somebody has reminded me that you could actually not even ask for bail at that stage and be left in jail for nine months. You could, and, you know, you could make a podcast like Roger. Or... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's good. Uh, there yeah. we are. That's pretty much, I think that's the end of our podcast for day. I not. I don't know how long that's been, but um, we're going to, we're just going to, uh, round that up. This is, um, this is a, our show called, this is not legal advice. And yep. Our goal is our goal is that um, any court case that an activist runs, no have, conviction, no penalty, no penalty and, a and a thank, thank you. you. So that's our that's what we're going for. So we're, we're trying to think about how we do the law in a different sort sort of way, uh, where people notice that we're doing good for society. So thanks yeah. for joining us today. And there's a couple more coming up about bail, uh, yeah. self repping on bail, um, self representing in court. Self representing generally in court yeah. and what some of the uh what what our non advice is around uh why that might be a good thing. So yeah. uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm just gonna turn that off.